with an eye made quiet by the power of harmony, and the deep power of joy, we see into the life of things. Life is divided into three terms, that which was, which is, and which will be. Let us learn from the past to profit by the present, and from the present, to live better in the future. That though the radiance which was once so bright be now forever taken from my sight, though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass, glory in the flower, we will grieve not, rather find strength in what remains behind. Wisdom is oftentimes nearer when we stoop than when we soar. The human mind is capable of excitement without the application of gross and violent stimulants, and he must have a very faint perception of its beauty and dignity who does not know this. The world is too much with us. Late and soon, getting and spending, we lay waste our powers, little we see in nature that is ours, we have given our hearts away, a sordid boon, the sea that bears her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours, and are upgathered now like sleeping flowers, for this, for everything, we are out of tune. Pictures deface walls more often than they decorate them. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Come forth into the light of things, let nature be your teacher. One impulse from a vernal wood may teach you more of man, of moral evil and of good, than all the sages can. The flower that smells the sweetest is shy and lowly. That best portion of a man's life, his little, nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and love. Fill your paper with the breathings of your heart. When from our better selves we have too long been parted by the hurrying world, and droop, sick of its business, of its pleasures tired, how gracious, how benign is solitude. For I have learned to look on nature, not as in the hour of thoughtless youth, but hearing oftentimes the still, sad music of humanity. How does the meadow flower its bloom unfold? Because the lovely little flower is free down to its root, and in that freedom bold. What is pride? A rocket that emulates the stars. What we need is not the will to believe, but the wish to find out. A multitude of causes unknown to former times are now acting with a combined force to blunt the discriminating powers of the mind, and unfitting it for all voluntary exertion to reduce it to a state of almost savage torpor. Not without hope we suffer and we mourn. Rapin, avarice, expense, this is idolatry, and these we adore, plain living and high thinking are no more. The things which I have seen I now can see no more. The best portion of a good man's life is his little, nameless, 
unremembered acts of kindness and of love. In modern business it is not the crook who is to be feared most, it is the honest man who doesn't know what he is doing. I listened, motionless and still, and, as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bore, long after it was heard no more. Suffering is permanent, obscure and dark, and shares the nature of infinity. Nature never did betray the heart that loved her. To me the meanest flower that blows can give thoughts that do often lie too deep for tears. Poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, it takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility. Our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting. Not an entire forgetfulness, and not an utter nakedness, but trailing clouds of glory do we come. But an old age serene and bright, and lovely as a Lapland night, shall lead thee to thy grave. The mind that is wise mourns less for what age takes away than what it leaves behind. Golf is a day spent in a round of strenuous idleness. Thought and theory must precede all salutary action, yet action is nobler in itself than either thought or theory. Where the statue stood of Newton with his prism and silent face, the marble index of a mind forever voyaging through strange seas of thought, alone. Where lies the land to which yon ship must go? Whether we be young or old, our destiny, our being's heart and home, is with infinitude, and only there, with hope it is, hope that can never die, effort and expectation, and desire and something evermore about to be. We bow our heads before thee, and we laud and magnify thy name, Almighty God. With nature never do they wage a foolish strife, they see a happy youth, and their old age is beautiful and free. We feel that we are greater than we know. Thrice welcome, darling of the spring, even yet thou art to me no bird, but an invisible thing, a voice, a mystery. Three years she grew in sun and shower, then nature said, A lovelier flower on earth was never sown, this child I to myself will take, she shall be mine, and I will make a lady of my own. Three sleepless nights I passed in sounding on, through words and things, a dim and perilous way. The primal duties shine aloft, like stars, the charities that soothe, and heal, and bless are scattered at the feet of man, like flowers. Like a sea beast crawled forth, that on a shelf of rock or sand reposeth, there to sun itself. Many are our joys in youth, but oh! What happiness to live when every hour brings palpable access of knowledge, 
when all knowledge is delight and sorrow is not there. Soft is the music that would charm forever, the flower of sweetest smell is shy and lowly. Soft is the music that would charm forever, the flower of sweetest smell is shy and lowly. She was a phantom of delight when first she gleamed upon my sight. She gave me eyes, she gave me ears, and humble cares, and delicate fears, a heart, the fountain of sweet tears, and love and thought and joy. Minds that have nothing to confer find little to perceive. Men are we, and must grieve when even the shade of that which once was great, is passed away. One in whom persuasion and belief had ripened into faith, and faith become a passionate intuition. One impulse from a vernal wood may teach you more of man, of moral evil and of good, than all the sages can. Oh, her rough and smooth she trips along, and never looks behind, and sings a solitary song that whistles in the wind. Oh, dearest, dearest boy! My heart for better lore would seldom yearn, could I but teach the hundredth part of what from thee I learn. No nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady haunt, among Arabian sands. A voice so thrilling there was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrew. O nightingale, thou surely art a creature of a fiery heart. My days, my friend, are almost gone, my life has been approved, and many love me, but by none am I enough beloved. More skillful in self-knowledge, even more pure, as tempted more, more able to endure, as more exposed to suffering and distress. More like a man flying from something that he dreads than one who sought the thing he loved. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. Nuns fret not at their convent's narrow room, and hermits are contented with their cells. No human ear shall ever hear me speak, no human dwelling ever give me food or sleep or rest, but, over waste and wild in search of nothing, that this earth can give but expiation, will I wander on, man by pain and thought compelled to live, yet loathing life, till anger is appeased in heaven, and mercy gives me leave to die. Poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, it takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility. Poetry is the breath and finer spirit of all knowledge, it is the impassioned expression which is in the countenance of all science. Never to blend our pleasure or our pride with sorrow of the meanest thing that feels. But, 
for, she is in her grave, and, oh, the difference to me. Give all thou canst, high heaven rejects the lore of nicely calculated less or more. For years and thirty, told this very week have I been now a sojourner on earth and yet the morning gladness is not gone which then was in my mind. For still, the more he works, the more do his weak ankles swell. Give unto me, made lowly wise, the spirit of self-sacrifice. Hence in a season of calm whether though inland far we be, our souls have sight of that immortal sea which brought us hither, can in a moment travel thither, and see the children sport upon the shore, and hear the mighty waters rolling evermore. He murmurs near the running brooks a music sweeter than their own. To every natural form, rock, fruits, or flower, even the loose stones that cover the highway, I gave a moral life. To every form of being is assigned, thus calmly spoke the venerable sage, an active principle. Her eyes as stars of twilight fair, like twilights, Two, her dusky hair. Her eyes as stars of twilight fair, like twilights, two, her dusky hair. I would stand if the night blackened with a coming storm beneath some rock, listening to notes that are the ghostly language of the ancient earth or make their dim abode in distant winds, thence did I drink the visionary power, and deem not profitless, those fleeting moods of shadowy exultation, not for this, that they are kindred to our purer mind and intellectual life, but that the soul, remembering how she felt, but what she felt remembering not, retains an obscure sense of possible sublimity. I would stand, if the night blackened with a coming storm, beneath some rock, listening to notes that are the ghostly language of the ancient earth, or make their dim abode in distant winds. Thence did I drink the visionary power, and deem not profitless those fleeting moods of shadowy exultation not for this, that they are kindred to our purer mind and intellectual life, but that the soul, remembering how she felt, but what she felt remembering not, retains an obscure sense of possible sublimity. Pleased rather with some soft ideal scene, the work of fancy, or some happy tone of meditation, slipping in between the beauty coming and the beauty gone. Plain living and high thinking are no more, the homely beauty of the good old cause is gone. O oh reader! Had you in your mind such stores as silent thought can bring, O oh gentle reader! you would find a tale in everything. Surprised by joy, impatient as the windy wish to share the transport. Stern daughter of the voice of God, O oh duty! If that name thou love who art a light to guide, a rod to check the erring and reprove. Stepping westward seemed to be a kind of heavenly destiny. 
That blessed mood in which the burden of the mystery in which the heavy and the weary weight of all this unintelligible world is lightened. Look for the stars, you'll say that there are none, look up a second time, and, one by one, you mark them twinkling out with silvery light and wonder how they could elude the sight. Look for the stars, you'll say that there are none, look up a second time, and, one by one, you mark them twinkling out with silvery light and wonder how they could elude the sight. My brain worked with a dim and undetermined sense of unknown modes of being. Who is the happy warrior? Who is he that every man in arms should wish to be? Wisdom is oft times nearer when we stoop than when we soar. Wisdom is oft times nearer when we stoop than when we soar. Who, doomed to go in company with pain and fear and bloodshed, miserable train, turns his necessity to glorious gain? Whither is fled the visionary gleam, where is it now, the glory and the dream? We have within ourselves enough to fill the present day with joy and overspread the future years with hope. Type of the wise who soar but never roam, true to the kindred points of heaven and home. Thy soul was like a star, and dwelt apart. The rapt one, of the godlike forehead, the heaven-eyed creature sleeps in earth, and lamb, the frolic and the gentle, has vanished from his lonely hearth. Written in early spring I heard a thousand blended notes while in a grove I sate reclined, in that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts bring sad thoughts to the mind. To her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran, and much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man. When a damp fell round the path of Milton, in his hand the thing became a trumpet, whence he blew soul-animating strains, alas, too few. There is a dark invisible workmanship, that reconciles discordant elements, and makes them move in one society. There is a comfort in the strength of love, tea will make a thing endurable, which else would overset the brain, or break the heart. There is a comfort in the strength of love, tea will make a thing endurable, which else would overset the brain, or break the heart. Why do not words and kiss, and solemn pledge, and nature that is kind in woman's breast, and reason that in man is wise and good, and fear of him who is a righteous judge, why do not these prevail for human life, to keep two hearts together, that be? Why art thou silent? Is thy love a plant of such weak fiber that the treacherous air of absence withers what was once so fair? Yet sometimes, when the secret cup of still and serious thought went round, it seemed as if he drank it up, he felt with spirit so profound. There are in our existence spots of time that with distinct preeminence retain a renovating virtue, 
whence our minds are nourished and invisibly repaired. Without thee what is all the morning's wealth, come, blessed barrier between day and day, dear mother of fresh thoughts and joyous health. We must be free or die who speak the tongue that Shakespeare spake, the faith and morals hold which Milton held. Two voices are there, one is of the sea, one of the mountains, each a mighty voice. But man is thy most awful instrument in working out a pure intent. Turning, for them who pass, the common dust of servile opportunity to gold. There is a luxury in self-dispraise, and inward self-disparagement affords to meditative spleen a grateful feast. Up. Up. My friend, and quit your books or surely you'll grow double. Up. Up. My friend, and clear your looks, why all this toil and trouble? What is pride? A whizzing rocket that would emulate a star. Though inland far we be, our souls have sight of that immortal sea which brought us hither. To humbler functions, awful power, I call thee, I myself commend unto thy guidance from this hour, oh, let my weakness have an end. To her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran. With gentle hand touch, for there is a spirit in the woods. What are fears but voices airy, whispering harm where harm is not, and deluding the unwary till the fatal bolt is shot? What are fears but voices airy, whispering harm where harm is not, and deluding the unwary till the fatal bolt is shot? Visionary power attends the motions of the viewless winds, embodied in the mystery of words. We live by admiration, hope and love and even as these are well and wisely fixed, in dignity of being we ascend. Beloved Vale, I said, when I shall con those many records of my childish years. Blessings be with them, and eternal praise who gave us nobler loves and nobler cares. Bliss was it in that dawn to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. As if the man had fixed his face in many a solitary place against the wind and open sky. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. A simple child that lightly draws its breath and feels its life in every limb, what should it know of death? And tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. And, through the heat of conflict, keeps the law and calmness made and sees what he foresaw. 
And yet not choice but habit rules the unreflecting herd. And you must love him, ere to you he will seem worthy of your love. And, when the stream which overflowed the soul was passed away, a consciousness remained that it had left, deposited upon the silent shore of memory, images and precious thoughts that shall not die, and cannot be destroyed. And, when the stream which overflowed the soul was passed away, a consciousness remained that it had left, deposited upon the silent shore of memory, images and precious thoughts that shall not die, and cannot be destroyed. Enough, if something from our hands have power to live, and act, and serve the future hour. There's not a nook within this solemn pass, but were an apt confessional for one taught by his summer spent, his autumn gone. That life is but a tale of morning grass withered at eve. There's not a man that lives who hath not known his godlike hours. The waves beside them danced but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee, a poet could not but be gay, in such a jocund company. The sea that bears her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours, and are upgathered now like sleeping flowers, for this, for everything, we are out of tune. The sweetest thing that ever grew beside a human door. The tendency, too potent in itself, of use and custom to bow down the soul under a growing weight of vulgar sense and substitute a universe of death for that which moves with light and life informed, actual, divine, and true. Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old, unhappy, far-off things and battles long ago. Science appears but what in truth she is, not as our glory and our absolute boast, but as a succedaneum and a prop to our infirmity. Wrapped into still communion that transcends the imperfect offices of prayer and praise. O oh, silence! Are man's noisy years no more than moments of thy life? Often have I sighed to measure by myself a lonely pleasure, sighed to think, I read a book only read, perhaps, by me. O, oh, be wiser thou, instructed that true knowledge leads to love. The music in my heart I bore long after it was heard no more. A day spent in a round of strenuous idleness. A day it was when I could bear to think, and think, and think again, with so much happiness to spare, I could not feel a pain. A creature not too bright or good, for human nature's daily food, for transient sorrows, simple wiles, praise, blame, love, kisses, tears and smiles. Strange fits of passion have I known, and I will dare to tell, but in the lover's ear alone, what once to me befell. Some sipping punch, some sipping tea, 
but, as you by their faces see, all silent and all damned. So was it when my life began, so is it now I am a man, so be it when I shall grow old or let me die. One great society alone on earth, the noble living and the noble dead. Action is transitory a step, a blow, the motion of a muscle, this way or that, tis done, and in the after vacancy we wonder at ourselves like men betrayed. Action is transitory a step, a blow, the motion of a muscle, this way or that, tis done, and in the after vacancy we wonder at ourselves like men betrayed. Dreams, books, are each a world, and books, we know, are a substantial world, both pure and good, round these. With tendrils strong as flesh and blood, our pastime and our happiness will grow. Dear God, the very houses seem asleep, and all that mighty heart is lying still. And that unless above himself he can erect himself, how poor a thing is man. A primrose by a river's brimme yellow primrose was to him and it was nothing more. A poet who has not produced a good poem before he is twenty-five, we may conclude cannot, and never will do so. And the most difficult of tasks to keep heights which the soul is competent to gain. Another year. Another deadly blow. Another mighty empire overthrown, and we are left, or shall be left, alone. Another race hath been, and other palms are won. Thanks to the human heart by which we live, thanks to its tenderness, its joys and fears. To me the meanest flower that blows can give thoughts that do often lie too deep for tears. As a huge stone is sometimes seen to lie couched on the bald top of an eminence. A youth to whom was given so much of earth, so much of heaven and such impetuous blood. A timely utterance gave that thought relief, and I again am strong. A slumber did my spirit seal, I had no human fears, she seemed a thing that could not feel the touch of earthly years. No motion has she now, no force, she neither hears nor sees, rolled round in earth's diurnal course. This city now doth, like a garment, wear the beauty of the morning, silent bare, Ships, towers, domes, theaters and temples lie open unto the fields and to the sky, all bright and glittering in the smokeless air. Think you, mid all this mighty sum of things forever speaking, that nothing of itself will come, but we must still be seeking. A man of hope and forward-looking mind even to the last. There neither is, nor can be, any essential difference between the language of prose and metrical composition. I traveled among unknown men, in lands beyond the sea, nor England.
Did I know till then what love I bore to thee? Still glides the stream, and shall forever glide, the form remains, the function never dies. Strongest minds are often those of whom the noisy world hears least. Tax not the royal saint with vain expense. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er valleys and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host, of golden daffodils. I've heard of hearts unkind, kind deeds with coldness still returning, alas. The gratitude of men hath oftener left me mourning. Not in utopia, subterranean fields, or some secreted island, heaven knows where. But in the very world, which is the world of all of us, the place where in the end we find our happiness, or not at all. After ten months melancholy, became a good and honest man. A perfect woman, nobly planned to warn, to comfort, and command, and yet a spirit still, and bright with something of angelic light. Small circles glittering idly in the moon, until they melted all into one track of sparkling light. So build we up the being that we are. The mightiest lever known to the moral world, imagination. The intellectual power through words and things went sounding on a dim and perilous way. The cottage which was named the Evening Star is gone. In common things that round us lie some random truths he can impart, the harvest of a quiet eye that broods and sleeps on his own heart. Impulses of deeper birth have come to him in solitude. In stray gifts to be claimed by whoever shall find. I hear, I hear, with joy I hear. Choice word and measured phrase, above the reach of ordinary men a stately speech. But hushed be every thought that springs from out the bitterness of things. Behold her, single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself, stop here, or gently pass. Because the good old rule sufficeth them, the simple plan that they should take, who have the power, and they should keep who can. Characters of the great apocalypse, the types and symbols of eternity, of first, and last, and midst, and without end. By our own spirits are we deified, we poets in our youth begin in gladness, but thereof come in the end despondency and madness. But trailing clouds of glory do we come from God, who is our home, heaven lies about us in our infancy. How men lived even next door neighbors, as we say, yet still strangers, not knowing each the other's name. 
how the bold teacher's doctrine, sanctified by truth, shall spread, throughout the world dispersed. Heaven lies about us in our infancy. Shades of the prison house begin to close upon the growing boy. For oft, when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. For oft, when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills, and dances with the daffodils. All men feel something of an honorable bigotry for the objects which have long continued to please them. The holy time is quiet as a nun breathless with adoration. The cattle are grazing, their heads never raising, there are forty feeding like one. And homeless near a thousand homes I stood, and near a thousand tables pined and wanted food. The grim shape towered up between me and the stars, and still, for so it seemed, with purpose of its own and measured motion like a living thing, strode after me. And much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man. And so the grandeur of the forest tree comes not by casting in a formal mold but from its own divine vitality. And often, glad no more, we wear a face of joy because we have been glad of your. And now I see with eye serene the very pulse of the machine. All things that love the sun are out of doors. All things have second birth. The earthquake is not satisfied at once. The child is the father of the man. The gods approve the depth, and not the tumult, of the soul. The good die first, and they whose hearts are dry as summer dust burn to the socket. The fretful stir unprofitable, and the fever of the world have hung upon the beatings of my heart. The common growth of Mother Earth suffices me, her tears, her mirth, her humblest mirth and tears. All the mighty world of eye and ear, both what they half create and what they perceive. And doth, with his eternal motion make a sound like thunder, everlasting. The love of God is passionate. He pursues each of us even when we know it not. The little unremembered acts of kindness and love are the best parts of a person's life. Like thoughts whose very sweetness yielded proof that they were born for immortality. We will grieve not, rather find strength in what remains behind. Huge and mighty forms that do not live like living men, moved slowly through the mind by day and were trouble to my dreams. 
No motion has she now, no force, she neither hears nor sees, rolled around in earth's diurnal course, with rocks, and stones, and trees. Poetry is emotion recollected in tranquility. Serene will be our days, and bright and happy will our nature be, when love is an unerring light, and joy its own security. Give unto me, made lowly wise, the spirit of self-sacrifice, the confidence of reason give, and in the light of truth thy bondman let me live. Some natural sorrow, loss, or pain that has been, and may be again. Never to blend our pleasure or our pride with sorrow of the meanest thing that feels. Blessings be with them, and eternal praise, who gave us nobler loves, and nobler cares, the poets, who on earth have made us heirs of truth and pure delight by heavenly lays. A perfect woman, nobly planned, to warn, to comfort, and command, and yet a spirit still, and bright with something of angelic light. The vision and the faculty divine yet wanting the accomplishment of verse. Until, the breath of this corporeal frame and even the motion of our human blood almost suspended, we are laid asleep in body, and become a living soul. While with an eye made quiet by the power of harmony, and the deep power of joy, we see into the life of things. Nor less I deem that there are powers which of themselves our minds impress, that we can feed this mind of ours in a wise passiveness. Those obstinate questionings of sense and outward things, fallings from us, vanishings, blank misgivings of a creature moving about in worlds not realized. High instincts before which our mortal nature did tremble like a guilty thing surprised. Because the good old rule sufficeth them, the simple plan, that they should take who have the power, and they should keep who can. The daisy, by the shadow that it casts, protects the lingering dewdrop from the sun. The tears into his eyes were brought, and thanks and praises seemed to run so fast out of his heart, I thought they never would have done. I've heard of hearts unkind, kind deeds with coldness still returning, alas. The gratitude of men hath oftener left me mourning. A famous man is Robin Hood, the English ballad singer's joy. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky, so was it when my life began, so is it now I am a man, so be it when I shall grow old, or let me die. The child is father of the man, I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. Heaven lies about us in our infancy. A few strong instincts and a few plain rules. Miss not the occasion, by the forelock take that subtle power, the never halting time. A voice so thrilling there was heard. Breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrides. 
What know we of the blessed above, but that they sing, and that they love? Often have I sighed to measure by myself a lonely pleasure, sighed to think I read a book, only read, perhaps, by me. Since every mortal power of Coleridge was frozen at its marvelous source, the rapt one, of the godlike forehead, the heaven-eyed creature sleeps in earth, and lamb, the frolic and the gentle, has vanished from his lonely hearth. Me this uncharted freedom tires, I feel the weight of chance desires, my hopes no more must change their name, I long for a repose that ever is the same. The common growth of Mother Earth suffices me, her tears, her mirth, her humblest mirth and tears. One that would peep and botanize upon his mother's grave. Neither evil tongues, rash judgments, nor the sneers of selfish men, nor greetings where no kindness is, nor all the dreary intercourse of daily life shall ever prevail against us. Sweet is the lore which nature brings, our meddling intellect misshapes the beauteous forms of things we murder to dissect. Enough of science and of art, close up these barren leaves, come forth, and bring with you a heart that watches and receives. To the solid ground of nature trusts the mind which builds for I. Worse than idle is compassion if it ends in tears and sighs. The sunshine is a glorious birth, but yet I know, where'er I go, that there hath passed away a glory from the earth. Meek nature's evening comment on the shows that for oblivion take their daily birth from all the fuming vanities of earth. I've watched you now a full half hour, self-poised upon that yellow flower and little butterfly. Indeed I know not if you sleep or feed. How motionless. Not frozen sees more motionless. And then what joy awaits you, when the breeze hath found you out among the trees, and calls you forth again. The bosom weight, your stubborn gift, that no philosophy can lift. Provoke the years to bring the inevitable yoke. Not in utopia, subterranean fields, or some secreted island, heaven knows where but in the very world, which is the world of all of us, the place where in the end we find our happiness, or not at all. And he is off the wisest man who is not wise at all. When his veering gait and every motion of his starry train seem governed by a strain of music, audible to him alone. Fear is a cloak which old men huddle about their love, as if to keep it warm. A deep distress has humanized my soul. The intellectual power, through words and things, went sounding on a dim and perilous way. Let beeves and homebred kind partake the sweets of Burn Mill Meadow, the swan on still St. Mary's Lake float double, swan and shadow. 
We meet thee, like a pleasant thought, when such are wanted. Yet sometimes, when the secret cup of still and serious thought went round, it seemed as if he drank it up, he felt with spirit so profound. A power is passing from the earth. Where the statue stood of Newton, with his prism and silent face, the marble index of a mind forever voyaging through strange seas of thought alone. In years that bring the philosophic mind, laying out grounds, may be considered as a liberal art, in some sort like poetry and painting. It is to assist nature in moving the affections, the affections of those who have the deepest perception of the beauty of nature. In hours of weariness, sensations sweet, felt in the blood, and felt along the heart, and passing even into my purer mind, with tranquil restoration, feelings, too, of unremembered pleasure, such, perhaps, as have no slight or trivial influence on that best portion of a good man's life, his little, nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and of love. But who shall parcel out his intellect by geometric rules, split like a province into round and square? To be a prodigal's favorite, then, worse truth, a miser's pensioner, behold our lot. Choice word and measured phrase above the reach of ordinary men. Men who can hear the Decalogue, and feel to self-reproach. Every gift of noble origin is breathed upon by hope's perpetual breath. Through primrose tufts, in that sweet bower, the periwinkle trailed its wreaths, and tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. What is good for a bootless bene? With these dark words begins my tale, and their meaning is, whence can comfort spring when prayer is of no avail? One of those heavenly days that cannot die. Nature's old felicities. Minds that have nothing to confer find little to perceive. And much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man. The memory of the just survives in heaven. He murmurs near the running brooks a music sweeter than their own. Oh, blank confusion. True epitome of what the mighty city is herself, to thousands upon thousands of her sons, living amid the same perpetual world of trivial objects, melted and reduced to one identity. And now I see with eye serene, the very pulse of the machine. A being breathing thoughtful breaths, a traveler between life and death. To character and success, two things, contradictory as they may seem, must go together, humble dependence on God and manly reliance on self. O oh reader! Had you in your mind such stores as silent thought can bring, O oh gentle reader, 
you would find a tail in everything. All men feel a habitual gratitude, and something of an honorable bigotry, for the objects which have long continued to please them. The eye, it cannot choose but see, we cannot bid the ear be still, our bodies feel, where'er they be, against or with our will. I have felt a presence that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply interfused, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, and the round ocean, and the living air, and the blue sky, and in the mind of man. Our meddling intellect misshapes the beauteous forms of things we murder to dissect. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky, so was it when my life began, so is it now I am a man. And homeless near a thousand homes I stood, and near a thousand tables pined and wanted food. Love betters what is best. For oft, when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. Sweet is the lore which nature brings, our meddling intellect misshapes the beauteous forms of things. We murder to dissect. The child is father of the man. A mind forever voyaging through strange seas of thought, alone. The child is father of the man, and I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. The earth was all before me. With a heart joyous, nor scared at its own liberty, I look about, and should the chosen guide be nothing better than a wandering cloud, I cannot miss my way. Poetry is the breath and finer spirit of knowledge. Bliss it was in that dawn to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. The good die first, and they whose hearts are dry as summer dust, burn to the socket. A simple child that lightly draws its breath, and feels its life in every limb, what should it know of death? There is a comfort in the strength of love, t'will make a thing endurable, which else would overset the brain, or break the heart. From the body of one guilty deed a thousand ghostly fears and haunting thoughts proceed. This city now doth like a garment wear the beauty of the morning, silent, bare, ships, towers, domes, theaters and temples lie open unto the fields and to the sky, all bright and glittering in the smokeless air. Great God, I'd rather be a pagan. Books Tis a dull and endless strife, come, hear the woodland linnet, how sweet is music. On my life, there's more of wisdom in it. The mind of man is a thousand times more beautiful than the earth on which he dwells. 
What is a poet? He is a man speaking to men, a man, it is true, endued with more lively sensibility, more enthusiasm and tenderness, who has a greater knowledge of human nature, and a more comprehensive soul, than are supposed to be common among mankind, a man pleased with his own passions and volitions, and who rejoices more than other men in the spirit of life that is in him, delighting to contemplate similar volitions and passions as manifested in the goings-on of the universe, and habitually impelled to create them where he does not find them. Dreams Books are each a world, and books, we know, are a substantial world, both pure and good, round these, with tendrils strong as flesh and blood. Our pastime and our happiness will grow. Our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting. And we shall find a pleasure in the dimness of the stars. I'll teach my boy the sweetest things, I'll teach him how the owlet sings. One impulse from a vernal wood. Before us lay a painful road. And guidance have I sought in duteous love from wisdom's heavenly Father. Hence hath flowed patience, with trust that, whatsoever the way each takes in this high matter, all may move cheered with the prospect of a brighter day. Wild is the music of autumnal winds amongst the faded woods. Beneath these fruit tree boughs that shed their snow white blossoms on my head, with brightest sunshine round me spread of spring's unclouded weather, in this sequestered nook how sweet to sit upon my orchard seat, and birds and flowers once more to greet my last year's friends together. Through primrose tufts, in that green bower, the periwinkle trails its wreath, and tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. The birds around me hopped and played, their thoughts I cannot measure, but the least motion which they made, it seemed a thrill of pleasure. The budding twigs spread out their fan, to catch the breezy air, and I must think, do all I can that there was pleasure there. If this belief from heaven be sent, if such be nature's holy plan, have I not reason to lament what man has made of man? Books are yours, within whose silent chambers treasure lies preserved from age to age, more precious far than that accumulated store of gold and orient gems, which, for a day of need, the sultan hides deep in ancestral tombs. These hordes of truth you can unlock at will. We have no knowledge, that is, no general principles drawn from the contemplation of particular facts, but what has been built up by pleasure, and exists in us by pleasure alone. The man of science, the chemist and mathematician, whatever difficulties and disgusts they may have had to struggle with, know and feel this. However painful may be the objects with which the anatomist's knowledge is connected, he feels that his knowledge is pleasure, and where he has no pleasure he has no knowledge. The child is the father of man. Like an army defeated the snow hath retreated. Spires whose silent finger points to heaven. Laying out grounds may be considered a liberal art, in some sort like poetry and painting. 
a primrose by the river's brim a yellow rose was to him, and it was nothing more. The rainbow comes and goes, and lovely is the rose. A flock of sheep that leisurely pass by one after one, the sound of rain, and bees murmuring, the fall of rivers, winds and seas, smooth fields, white sheets of water, and pure sky, I've thought of all by turns, and still I lie sleepless. My apprehension comes in crowds, I dread the rustling of the grass, the very shadows of the clouds, have power to shake me as they pass, I question things and do not find, one that will answer to my mind, and all the world appears unkind. While all the future, for thy purer soul, with sober certainties of love is blessed. O oh, dearer far than light and life are dear. It is a beauteous evening, calm and free, the holy time is quiet as a nun breathless with adoration, the broad sun is sinking down in its tranquility, the gentleness of heaven broods o'er the sea, listen. The mighty being is awake, and doth with his eternal motion make a sound like thunder everlastingly. Delivered from the galling yoke of time. Heaven lies about us in our infancy. Shades of the prison house begin to close upon the growing boy. The thought of our past years in me doth breed perpetual benedictions. The education of circumstances is superior to that of tuition. What are fears but voices airy, whispering harm where harm is not, and deluding the unwary till the fatal bolt is shot? The best of what we do and are, just God, forgive. For youthful faults ripe virtues shall atone. Milton Thou shouldst be living at this hour, England hath need of thee. Thy soul was like a star, and dwelt apart. So didst thou travel on life's common way in cheerful godliness. Where is it now, the glory and the dream? Plain living and high thinking are no more. The homely beauty of the good old cause is gone, our peace, our fearful innocence, and pure religion breathing household laws. As in the eye of nature he has lived, so in the eye of nature let him die. She lived unknown, and few could know when Lucy ceased to be, but she is in her grave, and oh the difference to me. Oh for a single hour of that Dundee who on that day the word of onset gave. But thou that didst appear so fair to fond imagination, dost rival in the light of day her delicate creation. Of all that is most beauteous, image there in happier beauty, more pellucid streams, an ampler ether, a diviner air, and fields invested with purpureal gleams. The stars of midnight shall be dear to her, 
and she shall lean her ear in many a secret place where rivulets dance their wayward round, and beauty born of murmuring sound shall pass into her face. Elysian beauty, melancholy grace, brought from a pensive though a happy place. How fast has brother followed brother, from sunshine to the sunless land. That kill the bloom before its time, and blanch, without the owner's crime, the most resplendent hair. She was a phantom of delight when first she gleamed upon my sight, a lovely apparition, sent to be a moment's ornament, her eyes as stars of twilight fair, like twilight's to her dusky hair, but all things else about her drawn from Maytime and the cheerful dawn. The holy time is quiet as a nun breathless with adoration. Alas! How little can a moment show of an eye where feeling plays in ten thousand dewy rays, a face o'er which a thousand shadows go. Far from the world I walk, and from all care. Recognizes ever and anon the breeze of nature stirring in his soul. The gods approve the depth, and not the tumult, of the soul. And when a damp fell round the path of Milton, in his hand the thing became a trumpet, whence he blew soul-animating strains, alas! Too few! Though inland far we be, our souls have sight of that immortal sea which brought us hither. And when the stream which overflowed the soul was passed away, a consciousness remained that it had left deposited upon the silent shore of memory images and precious thoughts that shall not die, and cannot be destroyed. And you must love him, ere to you he will seem worthy of your love. Thou hast left behind powers that will work for thee, air, earth, and skies. There is not a breathing of the common wind that will forget thee. Thou hast great allies, thy friends are exultations, agonies, and love, and man's unconquerable mind. At length the man perceives it die away, and fade into the light of common day. I thought of Chatterton, the marvelous boy, the sleepless soul that perished in his pride, of him who walked in glory and in joy, following his plow, along the mountainside. By our own spirits we are deified, we poets in our youth begin in gladness, but thereof come in the end despondency and madness. Hunt half a day for a forgotten dream. Wisdom married to a mortal verse. There's something in a flying horse, there's something in a huge balloon. The light that never was, on sea or land, the consecration, and the poet's dream. There was a time when meadow, grove, and stream, the earth, and every common sight, to me did seem apparelled in celestial light, the glory, and the freshness of a dream. A genial hearth, a hospitable board, 
and a refined rusticity. A creature not too bright or good for human nature's daily food, for transient sorrows, simple wiles, praise, blame, love, kisses, tears, and smiles. The sounding cataract haunted me like a passion, the tall rock, the mountain, and the deep and gloomy wood, an appetite. A feeling and a love that had no need of a remoter charm by thought supplied, nor any interest unborrowed from the eye. Myriads of daisies have shone forth in flower near the lark's nest, and in their natural hour have passed away. Less happy than the one that by the unwilling plowshare died to prove the tender charm of poetry and love. On a fair prospect some have looked, and felt, as I have heard them say, as if the moving time had been a thing as steadfast as the scene on which they gazed themselves away. A Briton even in love should be a subject, not a slave. But how can he expect that others should build for him? sow for him, and at his call love him, who for himself will take no heed at all. And the most difficult of tasks to keep heights which the soul is competent to gain. The clouds that gather round the setting sun do take a sober coloring from an eye that hath kept watch o'er man's mortality. Another race hath been, and other palms are one. Thanks to the human heart by which we live, thanks to its tenderness, its joys, and fears. To me the meanest flower that blows can give thoughts that do often lie too deep for tears. Who, doomed to go in company with pain and fear and bloodshed, miserable train, turns his necessity to glorious gain. Whom neither shape of danger can dismay, nor thought of tender happiness betray. The poet binds together by passion and knowledge the vast empire of human society. A cheerful life is what the muses love. A soaring spirit is their prime delight. Like an army defeated the snow hath retreated, and now doth fare ill on the top of the bare hill, the ploughboy is whooping, anon, anon. There's joy in the mountains, there's life in the fountains, small clouds are sailing, blue sky prevailing, the rain is over and gone. Not chaos, not the darkest pit of lowest Erebus, nor aught of blinder vacancy, scooped out by help of dreams, can breed such fear and awe as fall upon us often when we look into our minds, into the mind of man. She dwelt among the untrodden ways beside the springs of Dove, a maid whom there were none to praise and very few to love. Small service is true service, while it lasts. Ne'er saw I, never felt, a calm so deep. The river glitteth at his own sweet will. Dear God, the very houses seem asleep, and all that mighty heart is lying still. Sweet mercy, to the gates of heaven this minstrel lead, his sins forgiven, the rueful conflict, the heart riven with vain endeavor. 
and memory of Earth's bitter leaven effaced forever. Scorn not the sonnet. Critic, you have frowned, mindless of its just honors, with this key Shakespeare unlocked his heart. That blessed mood in which the burthen of the mystery, in which the heavy and the weary weight of all this unintelligible world is lightened. Thou unassuming commonplace of nature, with that homely face. We must be free or die, who speak the tongue that Shakespeare spake, the faith and morals hold which Milton held. O, oh, be wise, thou, instructed that true knowledge leads to love. We live by admiration, hope, and love, and, even as these are well and wisely fixed, in dignity of being we ascend. Plain living and high thinking are no more. He loves not well whose love is bold. I would not have thee come too nigh. The sun's gold would not seem pure gold unless the sun were in the sky. To take him thence and chain him near would make his beauty disappear. William Winter, Love's Queen. The unconquerable pang of despised love. For mightier far than strength of nerve or sinew, or the sway of magic potent over sun and star, is love, though oft to agony distressed, and though his favorite be feeble woman's breast. Truths that wake to perish never. The primal duties shine aloft, like stars, the charities that soothe, and heal, and bless, are scattered at the feet of man, like flowers. For by superior energies, more strict defiance in each other, faith more firm in their unhallowed principles, the bad have fairly earned a victory over the weak. The vacillating, inconsistent good. Hearing oftentimes the still, sad music of humanity, nor harsh nor grating, though of ample power to chasten and subdue. The soft blue sky did never melt into his heart, he never felt the witchery of the soft blue sky. My eyes are dim with childish tears, my heart is idly stirred, for the same sound is in my ears which in those days I heard. Monastic Brotherhood, Upon Rock Ariel Books are the best type of the influence of the past. Since thy return, through days and weeks of hope that grew by stealth, how many wan and faded cheeks have kindled into health. The old, by thee revived, have said, another year is ours, and wayworn wanderers, poorly fed, have smiled upon thy flowers. And what if thou, sweet May, Hast known mishap by worm and blight, if expectations newly blown have perished in thy sight, if loves and joys, while up they sprung, were caught as in a snare, such is the lot of all the young, however bright and fair. O cuckoo! Shall I call thee bird, or but a wandering voice? 
In this sequestered nook how sweet to sit upon my orchard seat and birds and flowers once more to greet. Spade, thou art a tool of honor in my hands. I press thee, through a yielding soil, with pride. T is hers to pluck the amaranthine flower of faith, and round the sufferer's temples bind wreaths that endure affliction's heaviest shower, and do not shrink from sorrow's keenest wind. But hushed be every thought that springs from out the bitterness of things. Society became my glittering bride, and airy hopes my children. Sweet childish days, that were as long, as twenty days are now. A brotherhood of venerable trees. Even thus last night, and two nights more I lay, and could not win thee, sleep, by any stealth, so do not let me wear tonight away. Without thee what is all the morning's wealth? Come, blessed barrier between day and day, dear mother of fresh thoughts and joyous health. Wrongs unredressed, or insults unavenged. Sensation sweet, felt in the blood, and felt along the heart. The harvest of a quiet eye, that broods and sleeps on his own heart. She gave me eyes, she gave me years, and humble cares, and delicate fears, a heart, the fountain of sweet tears, and love and thought and joy. I have seen a curious child, who dwelt upon a tract of inland ground, applying to his ear the convolutions of a smooth-lipped shell, to which, in silence hushed. His very soul listened intensely, for from within were heard murmurings whereby the monitor expressed mysterious union with its native sea. Even such a shell the universe itself is to the ear of faith, and there are times, I doubt not, when to you it doth impart authentic tidings of invisible things, of ebb and flow, and ever-enduring power, and central peace, subsisting at the heart of endless agitation. The fretful stir unprofitable, and the fever of the world have hung upon the beatings of my heart. His love was like the liberal air, embracing all, to cheer and bless. Imagination is the means of deep insight and sympathy, the power to conceive and express images removed from normal objective reality. Lady of the Mere, soul sitting by the shores of old romance. He spake of love, such love as spirits feel in worlds whose course is equable and pure, no fears to beat away, no strife to heal, the past unsighed for, and the future sure. Those old credulities, to nature dear, shall they no longer bloom upon the stock of history? Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. There is one great society alone on earth, the noble living and the noble dead. Or shipwrecked, kindles on the coast false fires, that others may be lost.
Look at the fate of summer flowers, which blow at daybreak, droop ere even song. A soul so pitiably forlorn, if such do on this earth abide, may season apathy with scorn, may turn indifference to pride, and still be not unblessed compared with him who grovels, self-debarred from all that lies within the scope of holy faith and Christian hope, or, shipwrecked, kindles on the coast false fires, that others may be lost. Now when the primrose makes a splendid show, and lilies face the march winds in full blow, and humbler growths as moved with one desire put on, to welcome spring, their best attire, poor robin is yet flowerless, but how gay with his red stalks upon this sunny day. That to this mountain daisy's self were known the beauty of its star-shaped shadow, thrown on the smooth surface of this naked stone. Pansies, lilies, kingcups, daisies, let them live upon their praises. Wrapped into still communion that transcends the imperfect offices of prayer and praise, his mind was a thanksgiving to the power that made him, it was blessedness and love. The thought of death sits easy on the man who has been born and dies among the mountains. Wisdom and Spirit of the Universe Thou soul, that art the eternity of thought, and gives to forms and images a breath and everlasting motion. Nor will I then thy modest grace forget, chaste snowdrop, venturous harbinger of spring, and pensive monitor of fleeting years. One solace yet remains for us who came into this world in days when story lacked severe research, that in our hearts we know how, for exciting youth's heroic flame, ascent is power, belief the soul of fact. The primrose for a veil had spread the largest of her upright leaves, and thus for purposes benign, a simple flower deceives. In spite of difference of soil and climate, of language and manners, of laws and customs in spite of things silently gone out of mind, and things violently destroyed, the poet binds together by passion and knowledge the vast empire of human society, as it is spread over the whole earth, and over all time. Long as there's a sun that sets, primroses will have their glory, long as there are violets, they will have a place in story, there's a flower that shall be mine, tis the little celandine. The mysteries that cups of flowers enfold and all the gorgeous sights which fairies do behold. Hope smiled when your nativity was cast, children of summer. The very flowers are sacred to the poor. But to a higher mark than song can reach, rose this pure eloquence. Earth fills her lap with pleasures of her own, yearning she hath in her own natural kind, and, even with something of a mother's mind, and no unworthy aim, the homely nurse doth all she can to make her foster child, her inmate man, Forget the glories he hath known and that imperial palace whence he came.
He who feels contempt for any living thing hath faculties that he hath never used, and thought with him is in its infancy. I should dread to disfigure the beautiful ideal of the memories of illustrious persons with incongruous features, and to sully the imaginative purity of classical works with gross and trivial recollections. Love, faithful love, recalled thee to my mind but how could I forget thee? Chains tie us down by land and sea, and wishes, vain as mine, may be all that is left to comfort thee. Stay, little cheerful robin. Stay, and at my casement sing, though it should prove a farewell lay and this our parting spring. Asterisk 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 then, little bird. This boon confer, come, and my requiem sing, nor fail to be the harbinger of everlasting spring. But who is innocent? By grace divine, not otherwise, O nature. We are thine. Dust as we are, the immortal spirit grows like harmony in music. There is a dark inscrutable workmanship that reconciles discordant elements, makes them cling together in one society. Primroses, the spring may love them, summer knows but little of them. Bright flower whose home is everywhere bold in maternal nature's care and all the long year through the air of joy or sorrow, methinks that there abides in thee some concord with humanity, given to no other flower I see the forest through. A babe, by intercourse of touch I held mute dialogues with my mother's heart. In truth the prison, unto which we doom ourselves, no prison is. Ethereal Minstrel Pilgrim of the sky, dost thou despise the earth where cares abound? Or, while the wings aspire, our heart and I both with thy nest upon the dewy ground? Either still I find some imperfection in the chosen theme, or see of absolute accomplishment much wanting, so much wanting, in myself, that I recoil and droop, and seek repose in listlessness from vain perplexity, and profitably traveling towards the grave. The softest breeze to fairest flowers gives birth. Think not that prudence dwells in dark abodes, she scans the future with the eye of gods. The streams with softest sound are flowing, the grass you almost hear it growing, you hear it now, if e'er you can. Oft on the dappled turf at ease I sit, and play with similes, Loose type of things through all degrees. Yon foaming flood seems motionless as ice, Its dizzy turbulence eludes the eye, frozen by distance. Sweetest melodies are those that are by distance made more sweet. I Methought, while the sweet breath of heaven was blowing on my body, felt within a correspondent breeze, that gently moved with quickening virtue, but is now become a tempest, a redundant energy, vexing its own creation. O oh joy!
That in our embers is something that doth live, that nature yet remembers what was so fugitive. Brothers all in honor, as in one community, scholars and gentlemen. Milton Thou shouldst be living at this hour, England hath need of thee, she is a fun of stagnant waters. Pleasures newly found are sweet when they lie about our feet. And oft I thought, my fancy was so strong, that I, at last, a resting place had found, here, will I dwell, said I, my whole life long, roaming the illimitable waters round, here will I live, of all but heaven disowned, and end my days upon the peaceful flood, to break my dream the vessel reached its bound, and homeless near a thousand homes I stood, and near a thousand tables pined and wanted food. On man, on nature, and on human life, musing in solitude, I oft perceive fair trains of images before me rise, accompanied by feelings of delight pure, or with no unpleasing sadness mixed. With little here to do or see of things that in the great world be, sweet daisy. Oft I talk to thee for thou art worthy, thou unassuming commonplace of nature, with that homely face, and yet with something of a grace which love makes for thee. Oh there is blessing in this gentle breeze, a visitant that while it fans my cheek doth seem half conscious of the joy it brings from the green fields, and from yon azure sky. Whatever its mission, the soft breeze can come to none more grateful than to me, escaped from the vast city, where I long had pined a discontented sojourner, now free, free as a bird to settle where I will. Two voices are there, one is of the deep, it learns the storm cloud's thunderous melody, now roars, now murmurs with the changing sea, now bird-like pipes, now closes soft in sleep, and one is of an old half-witted sheep which bleats articulate monotony, and indicates that two and one are three, that grass is green, lakes damp, and mountains steep and, Wordsworth, both are thine. Burn all the statutes and their shelves, they stir us up against our kind, and worse, against ourselves. Enough, if something from our hands have power to live, and act, and serve the future hour, and if, as toward the silent tomb we go, through love, through hope, and faith's transcendent dower, we feel that we are greater than we know. Tis not in battles that from youth we train the governor who must be wise and good, and temper with the sternness of the brain thoughts motherly, and meek as womanhood. I'm not talking about a show me other walls of this thing button, I mean a stumble button for wall base. Come, blessed barrier between day and day, dear mother of fresh thoughts and joyous health. We murder to dissect. When men change swords for ledgers, and desert the student's bower for gold, some fears unnamed I had, my country am I to be blamed? In that sweet mood when pleasure loves to pay tribute to ease, and, of its joy secure, 
the heart luxuriates with indifferent things, wasting its kindliness on stocks and stones, and on the vacant air. Careless of books, yet having felt the power of nature, by the gentle agency of natural objects, led me on to feel for passions that were not my own, and think, at random and imperfectly indeed, on man, the heart of man, and human life. Imagination which in truth is but another name for absolute power and clearest insight, amplitude of mind, and reason, in her most exalted mood. On man, on nature, and on human life, musing is solitude. Milton, in his hand the thing became a trumpet. How is it that you live, and what is it you do? The homely beauty of the good old cause is gone. The wealthiest man among us is the best. Dreams, books, are each a world. Wisdom and Spirit of the Universe Prompt to move but firm to wait, knowing things rashly sought are rarely found. And I am happy when I sing. A light to guide, a rod to check the erring and reprove. Write to me frequently the longest letters possible, never mind whether you have facts or no to communicate, fill your paper with the breathings of your heart. Milton, thou shouldst be living at this hour. If the time should ever come when what is now called science, thus familiarized to men, shall be ready to put on, as it were, a form of flesh and blood. The poet will lend his divine spirit to the aid the transfiguration, and will welcome the being thus produced, as a dear and genuine inmate of the household of man. It is the first mild day of March. Each minute sweeter than before, there is a blessing in the air. A lawyer art thou, draw not nigh, go, carry to some fitter place the keenness of that practiced eye, the hardness of that sallow face. Free as a bird to settle where I will. Through love, through hope, and faith's transcendent dower, we feel that we are greater than we know. Who is the happy warrior? Who is he that every man in arms should wish to be? It is the generous spirit, who, when brought among the tasks of real life, hath wrought upon the plan that pleased his boyish thought, whose high endeavors are an inward light that makes the path before him always bright, who, with a natural instinct to discern what knowledge can perform, is diligent to learn, and in himself posses his own desire. Great men have been among us, hands that penned and tongues that uttered wisdom better none. One with more of soul in his face than words on his tongue. Whose dwelling is the light of setting suns? A tale in everything. 
The budding rose above the rose full blown. Take the sweet poetry of life away, and what remains behind. Poetry is most just to its divine origin, when it administers the comforts and breathes the thoughts of religion. The unconquerable pang of despised love. Oft in my way have I stood still, though but a casual passenger, so much I felt the awfulness of life. Of friends, however humble, scorn not one. These hordes of wealth you can unlock at will. Truth takes no account of centuries. The wind, a sightless laborer, whistles at his task. My brain worked with a dim and undetermined sense of unknown modes of being, o'er my thoughts there hung a darkness, call it solitude or blank desertion. The mind of man, my haunt, and the main region of my song. In the mind of man, a motion and a spirit, that impels all thinking things, all objects of all thought, and rolls through all things. Knowledge and increase of enduring joy from the great nature that exists in works of mighty poets. It may be safely affirmed that there neither is, nor can be, any essential difference between the language of prose and metrical composition. They both speak by and to the same organs, the bodies in which both of them are clothed may be said to be of the same substance, their affections are kindred, and almost identical, not necessarily differing even in degree, poetry sheds no tears such as angels weep, but natural and human tears. She can boast of no celestial ichor that distinguishes her vital juices from those of prose. The same human blood circulates through the veins of them both. Poetry has never brought me in enough money to buy shoestrings. The child shall become father to the man. The oldest man he seemed that ever wore gray hairs. To be young was very heaven. Wisdom sits with children round her knees. Though nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass, of glory in the flower. Private courts, gloomy as coffins, and unsightly lanes thrilled by some female vendor's scream, belike the very shrillest of all London cries, may then entangle our impatient steps, conducted through those labyrinths, unawares, to privileged regions and inviolate, where from their airy lodges studious lawyers look out on waters, walks, and gardens green. the mightiest lever known to the world, imagination. The poet, gentle creature as he is, hath, like the lover, his unruly times, his fits when he is neither sick nor well, though no distress be near him but his own unmanageable thoughts. Earth has not anything to show more fair. 
A happy youth, and their old age is beautiful and free. We poets in our youth begin in gladness, but thereof come in the end despondency and madness. We bow our heads before thee, and we laud, and magnify thy name Almighty God. But man is thy most awful instrument, in working out a pure intent. But who, if he be called upon to face some awful moment to which heaven has joined great issues, good or bad for humankind, is happy as a lover? Tis said, Fantastic ocean doth enfold the likeness of whatever on land is seen. In heaven above, and earth below, they best can serve true gladness who meet most feelingly the calls of sadness. As generations come and go, their arts, their customs, ebb and flow, Fate, fortune, sweep strong powers away, and feeble, of themselves, decay. Action is transitory, a step, a blow, the motion of a muscle, this way or that, tis done and in the after vacancy, we wonder at ourselves, like men betrayed. Behold the child among his newborn blisses a six years darling of a pygmy size. See, where mid work of his own hand he lies, fretted by sallies of his mother's kisses, with light upon him from his father's eyes. See, at his feet, some little plan or chart, some fragment from his dream of human life, shaped by himself with newly learned art. Fluttering and dancing in the breeze. By happy chance we saw a twofold image, on a grassy bank a snow-white ram, and in the crystal flood another and the same. Dot this prayer I make, knowing that nature never did betray the heart that loved her, T is her privilege, through all the years of this our life, to lead from joy to joy. For she can so inform the mind that is within us, so impress with quietness and beauty, and so feed with lofty thoughts, that neither evil tongues, rash judgments, nor the sneers of selfish men, nor greetings where no kindness is, nor all the dreary intercourse of daily life, shall e'er prevail against us or disturb our cheerful faith, that all which we behold is full of blessings. And suddenly all your troubles melt away, all your worries are gone, and it is for no reason other than the look in your partner's eyes. Yes, sometimes life and love really is that simple. The sightless Milton, with his hair around his placid temples curled, and Shakespeare at his side, afraid, if clay could think and mind were wait, for him who bore the world. With battlements that on their restless fronts bore stars. And mighty poets in their misery dead. Turning, for them who pass, the common dust of servile opportunity to gold. Poetry is the outcome of emotions recollected in tranquility. Shalt show us how divine a thing a woman may be made. That mighty orb of song, the divine Milton. 
For all things are less dreadful than they seem. The weight of sadness was in wonder lost. Stop thinking for once in your life. Bright gem instinct with music, vocal spark. But hearing oftentimes the still, sad music of humanity. The clouds that gather round the setting sun, do take a sober coloring from an eye, that hath kept watch o'er man's mortality. Controls them and subdues, transmutes, bereaves of their bad influence, and their good receives. One interior life in which all beings live with God, themselves are God, existing in the mighty whole, indistinguishable as the cloudless east is from the cloudless west, when all the hemisphere is one cerulean blue. Yet tears to human suffering are due, and mortal hopes defeated and overthrown are mourned by man, and not by man alone. And often, glad no more, we wear a face of joy because we have been glad of your. Meek Walton's Heavenly Memory Here must thou be, O man, strength to thyself, no helper hast thou here, here keepest thou thy individual state, no other can divide with thee this work. No secondary hand can intervene to fashion this ability. Tis thine, the prime and vital principle is thine in the recesses of thy nature, far from any reach of outward fellowship, else tis not thine at all. There is a luxury in self-dispraise, an inward self-disparagement affords to meditative spleen a grateful feast. His high endeavors are an inward light that makes the path before him always bright. A youth to whom was given so much of earth, so much of heaven. Let the moon shine on thee in thy solitary walk, and let the misty mountain winds be free to blow against thee. Knowing that nature never did betray the heart that loved her, tis her privilege, through all the years of this our life, to lead from joy to joy. Science appears but what in truth she is, not as our glory and our absolute boast, but as a succedaneum and a prop to our infirmity. A man he seems of cheerful yesterdays and confident tomorrows. But trailing clouds of glory do we come, from God, who is our home, heaven lies about us in our infancy. The childhood of today is the manhood of tomorrow. Memories, images and precious thoughts that shall not die and cannot be destroyed. The monumental pomp of age was with this goodly personage, a stature undepressed in size, unbent, which rather seemed to rise in open victory o'er the weight of seventy years, to loftier height. Look for the stars, you'll say that there are none, look up a second time, and, one by one, you mark them twinkling out with silvery light.
and wonder how they could elude the sight. The first cuckoo's melancholy cry. As high as we have mounted in delight, in our dejection do we sink as low. The eagle, he was lord above. True dignity abides with him alone who, in the silent hour of inward thought, can still suspect, and still revere himself, in lowliness of heart. Babylon, learned and wise, hath perished utterly, nor leaves her speech one word to aid the sigh that would lament her. And through the heat of conflict keeps the law in calmness made, and sees what he foresaw. Two voices are there, one is of the sea, one of the mountains, each a mighty voice. May books and nature be their early joy. A great poet ought to a certain degree to rectify men's feelings, to render their feelings more sane, pure, and permanent, in short, more consonant to nature. Our noisy years seem moments in the being of the eternal silence. Thou best philosopher, who yet dost keep thy heritage, thou I among the blind. Therefore am I still a lover of the meadows and the woods and mountains, and of all that we behold from this green earth. For nature then to me was all in all. I bounded o'er the mountains, by the sides of the deep rivers, and the lonely streams, wherever nature led. Ah, what a warning for a thoughtless man, could field or grove, could any spot of earth, show to his eye an image of the pangs which it hath witnessed, render, back an echo of the sad steps by which it hath been trod. Great God! I'd rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn, so might I, standing on this pleasant Leah, have glimpses that would make me less forlorn, have sight of Proteus rising from the sea, or hear old Triton blow his wreath horn. Earth helped him with the cry of blood. Sad fancies do we then affect, in luxury of disrespect to our own prodigal excess of too familiar happiness. There is creation in the eye. The dew was falling fast, the stars began to blink I heard a voice it said drink, pretty creature, drink. I look for ghosts, but none will force their way to me. Tis falsely said that there was ever intercourse between the living and the dead. This solitary tree, a living thing produced too slowly ever to decay, a form and aspect too magnificent to be destroyed. Stern daughter of the voice of God, O duty, if that name thou love who art a light to guide, a rod to check the erring and reprove. The moving accident is not my trade, to freeze the blood I have no ready arts, tis my delight, alone in summer shade, 
to pipe a simple song for thinking hearts. If thou art beautiful, and youth and thought endue thee with all truth be strong, be worthy of the grace of God. She seemed a thing that could not feel the touch of earthly years. The silence that is in the starry sky, the sleep that is among the lonely hills. Poetry is the first and last of all knowledge, it is as immortal as the heart of man. Great is the glory, for the strife is hard. One in whom persuasion and belief had ripened into faith, and faith become a passionate intuition. A lake carries you into recesses of feeling otherwise impenetrable. I traveled among unknown men, in lands beyond the sea, nor England. Did I know till then what love I bore to thee? What we have loved others will love and we will teach them how. Whether we be young or old, our destiny, our being's heart and home, is with infinitude, and only there, with hope it is, hope that can never die, effort and expectation and desire and something ever more about to be. But he is risen, a later star of dawn. That inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. Faith is a passionate intuition. Death is the quiet haven of us all. Up. Up. My friend, and quit your books, or surely you, LL grow double. Up. Up. My friend, and clear your looks. Why all this toil and trouble? Happier of happy though I be, like them I cannot take possession of the sky, mount with a thoughtless impulse, and will there. One of a mighty multitude whose way and motion is a harmony and dance magnificent. I have said that poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. It takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility, the emotion is contemplated till, by a species of reaction, the tranquility gradually disappears, and an emotion, kindred to that which was before the subject of contemplation, is gradually produced, and does itself actually exist in the mind. Departing summer hath assumed an aspect tenderly illumined, the gentlest look of spring, that calls from yonder leafy shade unfaded, yet prepared to fade, a timely caroling. The feather, whence the pen was shaped that traced the lives of these good men, dropped from an angel's wing. Type of the wise who soar but never roam, true to the kindred points of heaven and home. Everything is tedious when one does not read with the feeling of the author. Stern winter loves a dirge-like sound. Then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Every great and original writer, 
in proportion as he is great and original, must himself create the taste by which he is to be relished. We live by admiration, hope and love. Men are we, and must grieve when even the shade of that which once was great is passed away. As thou these ashes, little brook, wilt bear into the Avon, Avon to the tide of Severn, Severn to the narrow seas, into main ocean they, this deed accursed an emblem yields to friends and enemies how the bold teacher's doctrine, sanctified by truth, shall spread, throughout the world dispersed. Nuns fret not at their convent's narrow room, and hermits are contented with their cells. Give all thou canst, high heaven rejects the lore of nicely colloquiated less or more. The truth is easier when you leave in it out, like when you five minutes away but you're just leaving your house. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance. Faith is necessary to explain anything and to reconcile the foreknowledge of God with human evil. Have I not reason to lament what man has made of man? The ocean is a mighty harmonist. Fiction, inner thoughts of Alicia true beauty dwells in deep retreats, whose veil is unremoved till heart with heart in concord beats, and the lover is beloved. Delight and Liberty, the Simple Creed of Childhood In ourselves our safety must be sought, by our own right hand it must be wrought. In that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts bring sad thoughts to the mind. But who would force the soul tilts with a straw against a champion cased in adamant? Father. To God himself we cannot give a holier name. By all means sometimes be alone, salute thyself, see what thy soul doth wear, dare to look in thy chest and tumble up and down what thou findest there. Tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. Habit rules the unreflecting herd. I am already kindly disposed towards you. My friendship it is not in my power to give, this is a gift which no man can make, it is not in our own power. A sound and healthy friendship is the growth of time and circumstance, it will spring up and thrive like a wildflower when these favor, and when they do not, it is in vain to look for it. Mark the babe not long accustomed to this breathing world, one that hath barely learned to shape a smile, though yet irrational of soul, to grasp with tiny finger, to let fall a tear, and, as the heavy cloud of sleep dissolves, to stretch his limbs, becoming, as might seem, the outward functions of intelligent man. Our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting, 
the soul that rises with us, our life star, hath had elsewhere its setting, and cometh from afar. Rest and be thankful. Let nature be your teacher. Bright was the summer's noon when quickening steps followed each other till a dreary moor was crossed, a bare ridge clomb, upon whose top standing alone, as from a rampart's edge, I overlooked the bed of Windermere, like a vast river, stretching in the sun. Mathematics is an independent world created out of pure intelligence. One daffodil is worth a thousand pleasures, then one is too few. We have within ourselves enough to fill the present day with joy, and overspread the future years with hope. All that we behold is full of blessings. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er valleys and hills when all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Be mild and cleave to gentle things, thy glory and thy happiness be there. Come grow old with me, the best is yet to be. How many undervalue the power of simplicity, but it is the real key to the heart. Strongest minds are often those whom the noisy world hears least. Pleasure is spread through the earth in stray gifts to be claimed by whoever shall find. 